At what point did you then go in front of the camera or decide that you want to direct? Like you, so you're working with props, you're working more behind the scenes, and then when do you get to be in front of the camera? So uh, it was 95 and I was working on The Chamber, which is a film with uh, John Grisham novel with uh, James Foley who directed it. Um, it was Gene Hackman and Chris O'Donnell in it. And so we were it was a, it was shot in LA, but then we traveled to Jackson, Mississippi. It was about a guy on death row. And um, I don't know if you I remember, I remember it. it was yeah, like there were, it was the worst, least successful of the John Grisham novels and um, films, adaption of the novel. And uh, so we were on, I was on set and the, I was on, I was assistant prop master and then a friend of mine was the onset dresser and we were always, you know, hustling to, you know, do this job. We were doing, you know, working really hard. And the director, you know, sort of saw that we were, you know, young and hungry. And, you know, so he wanted to sort of be friends with us because we were like always joking, having fun and stuff. And so, um, he at one point, you know, took the the uh, the walkie talkie. He said, "It's not cool. You guys all get to talk on the walkies, but I don't." So we gave him one of our walkies, and he's sitting there on the walkie, changing channels, talking to the assistant director, talking to the key grip, and everybody's like, "Why is the director on on the on the walkies? You know, he's not supposed to be. Let leave him to do his thing." But it just became this 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 great relationship. And on set, he just you know asked me one day, he's like, "So what is it you want to do when you grow up?" And I was like, "Well, you know, I like props. You know, I think you know, do a couple more as assistant prop master, and maybe I'll get to be a prop master." And he's like, "Nah." I'm like, "What do you mean, nah?" He's like, "Nah, you're you're too good. Like, you don't care. Like, I can tell you don't care about the job, but like, you're good, but you know, it's not what you want to do." I was like, "Oh." Well, he's like, don't tell me, but he said successful people know what they want to do and they write it out. They set a time when they want to do it by and they put amount of money they're going to have in the bank and then they just do it. And then they tell everybody that's what they're doing. I was like, oh, okay. So next day I show up on set and he asked me, did you write it down? I was like, ah, no. Now I thought about it. But it was such a confront, like, you know, it was like, I, the first day on set, I was like, ooh, watching actors, like, oh, this is awesome. You know, like, I get to see what they do. It's like, oh yeah, I wanna be an actor. Then I saw the director giving directions. Oh, directing is cool too. And then it was like, oh, the gaffer, lighting, setting up the shot. There's like so many things that I like to do. Um, but it's just like, it's so scary to be an actor, to say, oh, I'm gonna be an actor now. Like, I think I'll just stay as a PA. I'll just stay as a driver. I'll stay as a prop guy. Um, that's just safer and it was good money and so it was like you know I don't remember like on my second movie uh, an electrician was you know literally at the time I was not smoking but like I hung out with smokers <laughs> apparently because he was smoking by the truck and he was saying he's like yeah man you gotta be careful because the money's so good you don't want to leave so whatever it is you're gonna do man you should do it because you're gonna get sucked into this and go paychecks good and then you do another movie and then it's another movie and I was like, nah, that's not gonna happen to me. So here I am on set and talking to the director. So the next day I wrote out, you know, I wanna be an actor, writer, director, producer. Uh, I'm gonna start doing it after this next movie because I had a movie lined up right after. I'm gonna have $10,000 in the bank and I'm gonna do it on December 1st, 1995. So I came in the next day and I said, uh, so I wrote it down. Um, I wanna be an actor, writer, director, producer. He was like, okay. He's like, actor, worst job. You, you have no control over anything. Writer, you get no credit. Producer, hardest job, and you get no, like, nobody cares what you do. It's just, you're responsible for everything. He's like, director, that's the job. He's like, well, hey man, whatever you wanna do, but do it, because you now wrote it down. And so I did, I literally had that. I had a movie right after doing this movie, The Volcano. Uh, here in LA and so I that first day that I started I knew I was gonna finish on December 1st and I told everybody I told the first AD at one point and she ended up getting me a part as this rookie cop and I got to get my SAG card I told the producers within the pre while we were prepping and so when we were shooting one of the producers Neil Moritz would walk up to me and say so what do you think should we uh, break for lunch or should we just do a walking meal you know, all those kind of things were just sort of, I would tell people this is what I wanted to do. Director, I talked to him and 
ask him why he picked this shot. I mean, I'm doing my job. It's not like I'm that guy just like hanging out. So <laughs> people were, were open to, to talking to me about that. And then I finished that and I um, literally took off six months and I started an acting class. I took a directing workshop at AFI. I uh, started writing and did a, um, a workshop through, which used to be film, not film independent. It used to be something else, but now it's fine. And, um, and then a producing course through AFI as well. And so I remember, I remember uh, uh, showing up at a film independent event like three months after that, you have to have a little tag on your thing. And it says, you know, what your when you sign up, like what your profession is. So I thought it was like, I'm, well, what am I here for? I'm like actor, writer, director, producer. So I wrote that all down and I met this guy and he's like, oh man, so what have you done? And I was like, uh, oh, I thought this was just like what you wanted to be when you grow up. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't know. And he and I are still friends to this day. Like we are still, we still talk. We're still on Facebook, you know, connecting with each other. But he was just so like, no, that's not how it works. You gotta be doing something. I'm like, why? I mean, I'm saying I want to do this, so how else will people know if I'm, they don't know what I want to do? So, I mean, it, it and, and that's a whole nother story for me. It's just sort of like how hard it is to say you want to do more than just one thing because, you know, people really want to just go, but yeah, but what do you really want to do? You know, what is it? We have to focus on one thing. Um, and so I just was just listening to this great TED talk about how you can't be great at one, why you're not going to be great at one thing. This woman, Elaine, something about multi, uh, not like a multi-professional, like you have different, different, I, different areas of your life. Like you're a hairstylist and you also, you know, a violinist, you know, somebody that does m multiple things, which is what I think I am. So, um, I've got way off track on my, on your question, but no, no, um, it's an interesting journey that you, you've taken us on. So with that director, did that set in motion you writing things down, that challenge? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that that really pushed me into realizing that I had to, you know, have some accountability to what I wanted to do. So I ended up getting a whiteboard and, you know, writing out my goals all the time. It's something I do. I still do to this day. I'll write out. Um, I have a, a friend of mine that's sort of like an accountability partner. We email each other Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We sort of, these are our goals for the 90 days. These are the actions I'm taking towards each of these goals. Here's what I'm doing this week. And, you know, it just kind of ups my, my game because it's so easy to get sort of stuck by myself sitting in front of my computer. Like, how am I supposed to get from A to Z? And so, and then it's also great because there's like sort of markers of like, oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting closer to... You know, at the end of the year, it's not like, you know, oh, I didn't, what did I do this year? It's like, I did a ton of stuff. I used to, the last couple of years before, I just had a baby four, 14 months ago. So oh, well, I did, my wife did, but um, thank Brian. you. Thank you. Yeah, Brian. And uh, so, but it, his, my office is now his bedroom. And so, but on, at the time I had uh, painted a, the one wall in my, in my office, uh, chalkboard black. And I started writing down, you know, at first it was just sort of projects and things, updates, things I was doing. Then I was getting frustrated that my projects weren't going where I wanted them to go. So what I did was I shifted that and I just like, we were going on vacation. And I was like, I'm just, end of the year, I was like, I just have to clean this whole wall off. I'm just, these projects, I'm just so frustrated because I have like 25 projects and like, I can't control any of the stuff that's on this wall. It's just so frustrating. So we went on vacation and I came back and it was like a blank wall. And so I was like, well, what, what can I not, I don't want to put anything on there. That's just, just to put it up there, you know, cause I had, was getting ready to have a meeting for something, one of our projects. And I was going to put it up there. And I was like, eh. instead I put God's will, which sort of like a, I'm the universe, whatever, whatever you want. I'm just going to put it up there. And if it, if I get something, if something happens, a meeting, if something moves forward, then I'll write it up there, but I'm not going to sort of put my intention. This is all the things I want. And so sort of I don't know why I thought of it. don't know why I did that, but what ended up happening was every time I got a meeting, every time I got an opportunity, every time I met somebody, every time I had an audition, I booked something, uh, you know, a uh, project was moving forward, wrote something, whatever those things were finished an outline. I'd write all those things on the board. And so at the end of six months, I was like, oh, wow, this is like a lot of stuff is happening. 
And then by the end of that first year, it was so clear to me that I, you know, I didn't know any of those things were going to happen. So like the day before those things happened, I had no idea. Now I had like intentions of like all the things that I want and what I want for my career and my life, but the specifics of, you know, how I was going to get them, I had no idea. So it's sort of like this weird thing of like, how do I get from A to B? I don't really know how it's going to happen. I know that I want B. And so I take a ton of actions. I do a ton of stuff that's risky and then we'll see what happens. And out of that, all these things sort of polish over here, shines over here. And so at the end of the year, I was looking like, holy cow, like my life is huge. Like I've had this, this has been an amazing year. And it was none of those things were things that I could have come up with. Like if I had said, here are the things I want to be, I want to be directing a Capital One commercial. I want to be directing a Nissan Heisman spots with, you know, these amazing NFL football players. Like I couldn't, I couldn't, my aperture of what my possibilities were was like this. But when I just sort of opened it up and went, all right, I don't know what's exactly gonna happen, but I wanna be directing, I wanna be writing, I wanna be producing, I wanna be acting. These are the things I wanna be doing. I wanna be with these kind of people, this level of people, and then this thing happened. So I did that for two years, and then we had the baby. And so it was just like, I had to like clean that up. But it was such a huge thing for me. And I actually miss it. I missed it this year. Um, and I was thinking about it, actually this morning go, maybe I'm gonna write, we have a whiteboard that's behind our, now my, my wife and I share uh, an office and it's behind one of our sliding doors, but we haven't put anything on it. We've been like, eh, I don't wanna, let's see what we'll do. We'll kind of, maybe we'll do something different this year. And it's, you know, it's just like, oh, he's alive. We have to keep him alive. That's, that's our, <laughs> like our goal yeah. right now is that, you know? And so, but I was thinking, ah, oh, there's so many things happening just from yesterday that I would love to be able like, oh, I didn't know that was gonna happen. Oh, this is really cool, this is happening. So I wrote them on my notebook. I was like, I might do that you know, later on today. What if he wants to become a screenwriter or an actor, producer, director? You know, well, whatever he wants to do. I mean, we basically, we were talking about that too because uh, somebody was talking, one of our families like, so do you guys have a college fund set up for him? And we're like, wow. yeah, but you know, if he doesn't want to go to college, he doesn't have to go to college. Neither of us went to college, you know, and you know, at the same time of when we're saying to school, like just, you know, we had a perspective of school. We have one now and it's like, you know, we want him to have as much opportunity as possible and as much knowledge as possible. We don't want to, us to force him. We already tried to force him to like eat when we want him to eat, to do what we want him to do. That's not working. So I don't think it's going to be successful when he's in, you know, graduating from high school. So we just really want to try to, um, if he wants to be a screenwriter, if he wants to act, if he wants to, you know, if he's, you know, wants to be a hairstylist, he seems to want to help her do her makeup. So maybe he'll nice. be a makeup artist, you know, so yeah, whatever he wants. So, well, I know we were talking earlier and, and about, you know, uh, safety and, and there's no real safe route, especially post recession. I think a lot of what maybe our parents generation thought was mm -hmm. the, the safe, the norm uh, was one thing. And there was always that, you know, my grandparents generation get, you know, a job with a pension. And since a lot of that safety is not there anymore, I think it's it's like kind of like just you said, like whoever's will, let's, yeah. let's, you know. Yeah, I think so too. I think that it, I think it, it was, well, times have changed so much. It used to be, that, I mean, it just that was how it used to be. It used to be a very simplified way of looking at things. And now, I mean, I had so many friends that parents had lost everything in the, you know, in the market crash. They had all this money in their house then they went underwater and they had nothing, you know? And so it was just all their savings was like, oh, well, we have it, equity in our house. And then when that went away, it was like, there's nothing. And so right. there is no safe. There's no, like, I'm just gonna start at a bank teller and make it to bank manager. And well, bank is probably the wrong thing. Cause of course they're gonna, banks always win. The bank always wins. Banks seem to never get arrested yeah, or anything. So they can- You saw the big show. Yeah, yeah, I saw the big show. I know exactly what happens. <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> They just rename everything. They just rename everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> just buy another bank and now they're, you know. Sure, change laws. And yeah, exactly. Just rename them.